Hey guys, John Engel here, and I've got some great news. Today we're gonna fix that by installing a brand new double DIN. So today we're gonna do an oil change and replace things. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. You have loved the shop build so much that I thought I'd take you on the next process. Now remember, we built this shop, which is a 30 by 50 out of steel. Then we put electricity into it, and now we need to make it where we can work in here in the summer, and that means insulation. So the first thing that we have to do, get rid of all of the cars. Stay tuned. Definitely one of the benefits of moving everything out is you have the world's dirtiest car show. And look at all the room that we have for activities. And now we can get started. I've put two bales of the styrofoam. Now that's two inch with the radiant barrier on both sides. Unfortunately, I will show you that it will not fit as well as we would like if you just try to put it in. It's too thick, so each piece has to be cut by about an eighth, and that's what we're going to get into now. So here's everything that I'm using. Obviously, we've got our two-inch foam. I've got this multi-purpose insulation tape that is also aluminum, which I will put a link in the description, and that way it'll all match up so everything will just look metal. I did buy this really cool um, it's called a foam knife and it's got two different edges on it. This has been my best friend. I started out using the saw and it would not cut straight. The, the actual blade would bend. So I've been doing each one by hand. I've got some clamps. I've got the drill just to take things off of the wall, my tape measure so I know how much to cut. And then a board. Yes, it would be nice to have an eight foot board to put across in one cut, but I don't have that right now and I'm kind of too lazy to go get it. So this is what I will be cutting with and let's go ahead and look at some of the progress that I've made. We will call this exhibit A. This is with no cutting at all and forcing it in between. And you can see up at the top, it's very hard to force in. It bows out in the middle. I'm probably gonna take this one out and cut it just so that it will fit like the others. Here is one that has been cut and it fits perfectly in there. If it is a little loose, the tape will hold it in. This one is the one that I did with the, with the Sawzall. And as you can see, right here is where that blade started to deflect and everything, even though there was a piece of board for a straight edge. So this one is going to come out and be used over here. Basically, I'll use that as filler pieces to fill in beside the windows and also below and above the door. So that still is a good piece, but basically not what's gonna be used. Over on this side, you can see that I've just started putting in full pieces. As long as they are a little tight, they fit. This one obviously is a little loose. Not exactly uh, what I wanted, but the tape will hold that in perfectly, so that will be fine. What you want is one like this piece that fits with just enough snugness that, look at this, I mean, it ain't going anywhere. That thing is in there perfectly. So we're going to try to recreate that as much as possible. I went ahead and put up ones that didn't require any further cutting. So that was a good start, but now we're going to have to start cutting around all of the electrical switches, around the lights. Um, here, these are not four foot spaces anymore, so we've got to cut there. I'm still not exactly sure what I'm going to do behind the cabinets. Yes, I should pull them out and put foam behind it, and I think that is what I'm going to do. Same with over here, even though this section is a mess. But that is the plan, so let's start unbundling this and cutting some more. All right guys, this was the one piece, as you can see right here, that got messed up, and I just wanted to go ahead and start with this. So what I've done is I've basically measured out how far from the bottom to right here where I've marked it, 
to get underneath that window and then we'll just cut straight across there and place it under the window and that way even though we were learning and messing up we haven't wasted a full sheet and then we'll cut the rest of that into those little winglets that go on the side so this will actually turn out to be a blessing in disguise we're not going to waste a piece but we're going to get to reuse it so how do we do that measure out what you want i like to use the styrofoam as a workbench because well that makes it nice. We're gonna take a piece of wood, put it right across those marks, get one in as soon as you like it. And of course I move it. Vice that down, just a little pressure just so it holds it. This side's the exact same. Just make sure you line it up with your marks. Put it on there, a little pressure. Everything looks good. Now, on this one, with the type foam that we are using, I like to go with the less serrated edge. This thing is sharp. Uh, they obviously designed this for it and they did a good job. This side also works very well. I just think that you do more work to get this side with the more serration to cut. So, let's just see if we can get this started. Of course, this is gonna be a awkward one to start on, but let's see how we're gonna do this. One thing you also want to make sure is that you've got enough space to hold everything underneath it. Look at that. Professional grade right here, nothing less. And there we go. This thing is amazing. Yes, it is a little bit of work. And no, I did not cut it all the way through. I think a circular saw would probably be the best thing if you have one that will, that will basically fit it, but there we go. Now we have a piece. All right, let's go install this piece. We do a lot of things on this channel, but one of them is wildlife rescue. Check out this praying mantis. We're gonna go ahead and relocate him so that he will go back outside, but he is just very cool looking, just chilling, wanting to be everybody's friend. To install the piece for me, makes it very simple. You can see that I've got lag bolts at the bottom, so obviously the bottom goes in first. Then we just kind of wedge it down in there. And if you've done this right, you've got a little piston like that. And same for up here. And voila, you have your first installed piece of foam. Okay, so I cut the winglet and we wanna make sure because of these bolts over on those sides that we kinda of give those the option to fade in first. So we'll kinda of get those in and just gently persuade this. I really think sometimes a piece of wood and a hammer might also help with this, but I do like that nice, Push in. Like it was made for it. I'm pretty happy with that. It's a good seal. One more and then this window, except for up there, is done. And just like that, this section is complete. Now, of course, we gotta go up and do everything else, but this fiddly work takes a lot more time than you realize, I'll warn you. I'm not happy with how long it took and how much you gotta finagle with it, but it's getting there. 
let's just keep going down the rung and see how we do. All right, so now we've got to cut around an electrical outlet, and I'm sure that there are great ways to do this. However, I didn't have any right off the top of my head except to put this next to it, put a box basically right up to it, make sure that they're even. And then I have a little template next to it, and I'm going to cut that out. And once that's cut out, I can then put this piece in. Now, note, I did turn the electricity off just in case. The thing that you don't want to happen is to get a lot of all of the insulation and foam in there because that could cause a fire. So make sure you turn it off. Make sure that when you do this, if you get any insulation in there, that you blow it out, suck it out, or however you want to get it out, but you don't want to turn it back on and risk burning everything down that you've just done. So now that I've got that outlined on there, let's cut it out. Now that we have our hole cut out, we can kind of wedge this in and hopefully it will go in nicely. Those bolts at the bottom are a chain. You can kind of see that I got it. These tools for door really come in handy here because you can actually just take them and like right there, it's coming up with a little bit of an issue. We'll just kind of gently pry that over and up. And then this one, we're gonna gently pry down and over. And I know right now it's hard for you to see that, but at the end of the day, that is what you get. All right, guys, I'm exhausted for today. I've done a lot of work, but it's a little bit of the project. This is a tedious job, not hard, but you do have to measure like a thousand times. I have an Elsa Band-Aid because, well, sharp objects cut people, and I'm not smart enough to realize that you should cut always away from yourself. Anyway, hopefully this has helped. I'll leave a description on all of the tools and all of the products that we're using in this so that you can order them if you're looking to do a shop similar to this. But I figure before we leave, I'll show you at least what I've gotten done. All right guys, this still all needs to come out so I can do that, but I did do all of this all the way up until we get to the new cabinet system where I've not done any of that back wall except for that one. And then I did this whole bottom wall. Yeah, that means that all of this still needs to be done. And I figured that you guys aren't gonna to be too interested in that, but this is how it goes. If you make it tight enough, they fit in just like they're supposed to. If you don't, well, then you can cut a new piece. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this, liked it, got some information out of it. We'll catch you next time.